kindergartners. Thanks for joining me again for more read alouds today. Um, so today I got some stories from our book bags. Remember we used to take these home and we would borrow them on Thursdays and you'd get them all weekend and treat them with your families. Um, so now we're gonna check out book bag number 26. So we have Panda Kindergarten. Chrysanthemum, oops, and In the Tall Tall Grass. So I'll read these stories today and then the activity will be down below. <laughs> All right, Panda Kindergarten. Ooh. I wonder what can pandas do in kindergarten. Hmm. This one is written by Joanne Ryder and photographs are by Catherine Fang. One panda cub is a sight to see. Two panda cubs together is rare. But imagine seeing 16 young giant pandas all at once. Meet a pin panda kindergarten class at the Wolong Nature Reserve in China, where pandas are protected, loved, and given great care. Each cub is born in a cozy room on a soft bed of straw. A newborn cub is fuzzy and pink. After a few weeks, it starts to look like it's black and white mother. <laughs> An ever so big mother panda carries her ever so tiny baby, holding it firmly but tenderly. She guides her new cub, which cannot see her, to rest on her broad furry ch chest and drink her fresh milk. All the young cubs are watched over by their mothers by kind, trained people. Pandas often have twins, but a mother can care for only one cub at a time. <laughs> the other twin needs to be fed and kept healthy and protected in a nearby panda nursery. As the small bears grow, the skilled and helpful people and the mother panda swap cubs, so each twin gets constant care and both share time with their mother. With such a loving team, each panda cub grows and grows. Slowly, its eyes open wide and it begins to see its mother's furry face and other faces full of smiles. When the panda cubs are big enough to leave their nursery and their mother's when the panda cubs are big enough to leave their nursery and their mothers, they are ready to have new adventures and to make new friends in panda kindergarten. Here come the kindergartners. Look at them go. The young pandas have their own panda playground, full of places where cubs can swing and climb and play with their new friends. Pandas that play together may learn to be comfortable with each other as cubs and as adults. In their outdoor playground, the curious cubs learn exciting things about their world. They discover snow is cold and very slippery. <laughs> Pandas always find new ways to play, like tugging and tearing and touching their toes. To a panda cub, almost everything can be a toy. Almost anything can be a toy. Bolder and stronger cubs try new things, climbing high and dangling until it's time for lunch in the panda kindergarten. With so much to do and so much to discover, lively little bears start feeling tired and sleepy. It's time for cubs to take a nap. The young pandas will be together in panda kindergarten for about a year. As they grow older, some will stay in their safe Wulong home and have cubs of their own. One day, some may be chosen to leave and live in the bamboo forests, in the tall misty mountains nearby. Then the rare pandas born in Wolong would roam free and wild, able to use the skills they learned when they were small. <laughs> Learning from each other and from the people who care for them, the pandas born in Wolong are on a special journey that gives hope to pandas everywhere and to all who love them. The end. And here's some facts about pandas. Let's see, about giant pandas. A newborn giant panda is the size of a stick of butter and weighs about four ounces. 
an adult panda can weigh well over 200 pounds. In the wild, giant, giant pandas mainly eat bamboo. They can eat 40 pounds of bamboo leaves each day. That's a lot of bamboo. And the giant panda is an unofficial, ugh, the giant panda is an unofficial national mascot of China. Unofficial mascot of China. <laughs> panda kindergarten. That was a good one. Alright. Our next one that we have is Chrysanthemum. Blah, blah, blah. My tongue keeps getting twisted up today. Chrysanthemum by Kevin Hanks. Chrysanthemum. The day she was born was the happiest day of her parents' lives. She's perfect, said her mother. Absolutely, said her father. And she was. She was absolutely perfect. Her name must be everything she is, said her mother. Her name must be absolutely perfect, said her father. And it was. Chrysanthemum. Her parents named her Chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum grew and grew and grew. And when she was old enough to appreciate it, Chrysanthemum loved her name. She loved the way it sounded when her mother woke her up. She loved the way it sounded when her father called her for dinner. And she loved the way it sounded when she whispered it to herself in the bathroom mirror. Chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum loved the way her name looked when it was written with ink on an envelope. She loved the way it looked when it was written with icing on her birthday cake. And she loved the way it looked when she wrote it herself with her fat orange crayon. Chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum thought her name was absolutely perfect. And then she started school. On the first day, Chrysanthemum wore, wore her sunniest dress and her brightest smile. She ran all the way. Hooray, said Chrysanthemum, school. But when Mrs. Chud took a roll call, everyone giggled upon hearing Chrysanthemum's name. There's Mrs. Chud, Dawn, Eve, Lois, Al, Les, Kay, Max, Sue, Bill, Pat, Tom, Sam, Ken, Joe, Rita, Victoria, and Chrysanthemum. It's so long, said Joe. It scarcely fits on your name tag, said Rita, pointing. I'm named after my grandmother, said Victoria. You're named after a flower. Chrysanthemum wilted. She did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She thought it was absolutely dreadful. The rest of the day was not much better. During nap time, Victoria raised her hand and informed Mrs. Chud that, Chrysanthemum, that Chrysanthemum's name was spelled with 13 letters. That's exactly half as many letters as there are in the entire alphabet, Chris, Victoria explained. Thank you for sharing that with us, Victoria, said Mrs. Chud. Now put your head down, because it's nap time. They're supposed to be sleeping. If I had a name like yours, I'd change it, Victoria said, as the students lined up to go home. I wish I could, thought Chrysanthemum miserably. Welcome home, said her mother. Welcome home, said her father. School is no place for me, said Chrysanthemum. My name is too long. It scarcely fits on my name tag, and I'm named after a flower. Oh, pish, said her mother. Your name is beautiful, and precious, and priceless, and fascinating, and winsome, said her father. It's everything you are, said her mother. Absolutely perfect, said her father. Chrysanthemum felt much better after her favorite dinner, macaroni and cheese with ketchup, and an evening filled with hugs and kisses and parcheesi. That night, Chrysanthemum dreamed her name was, that her name was Jane. It was an extremely pleasant dream. The next morning, Chrysanthemum wore her most comfortable jumper. She walked to school as slowly as she could. She dragged her feet in the dirt. Chrysanthemum, 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 she wrote. She even looks like a flower, said Victoria, as Chrys Chrysanthemum entered the playground. Let's pick her, said Rita, pointing. Let's smell her, said Joe. Chrysanthemum wilted. She did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She thought it was absolutely dreadful. Chrysanthemum. The rest of the day was not much better. During nap time, Victoria raised her hand and said, 
A chrysanthemum is a flower. It lives in a garden with water, with worms, and other dirty things. Thank you for sharing that with us, Victoria, said Mrs. Chud. Now put your head down. She always interrupts nap time. I just cannot believe your name, Victoria said, as the students lined up to go home. <sighs> Neither can I, thought Chrysanthemum miserably. Welcome home, said her mother. Welcome home, said her father. School's no place for me, said Chrysanthemum. They said I even look like a flower. They pretended to pick me and smell me. Oh, pish, said her mother. They're just jealous and envious and begrudging and discontented and jaundiced, said her father. Who wouldn't be jealous of a name like yours, said her mother. After all, it's absolutely perfect, said her father. Chrysanthemum felt a trifle better after her favorite dessert, chocolate cake with buttercream frosting, and another evening filled with hugs and kisses and parcheesi. That night, Chrysanthemum dreamed that she really was a chrysanthemum. She sprouted leaves and petals. Victoria picked her and plucked the leaves and petals one by one until there was nothing left but a scrawny stem. It was the worst nightmare of Chrysanthemum's life. Chrysanthemum wore her outfit with seven pockets the next morning. She loaded the pockets with her most prized possessions and her good luck charms. Chrysanthemum took the longest route possible to school. She stopped and stared at each and every flower. Chrysanthemum, 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 the flowers seemed to say. That morning, the students were introduced to Mrs. Twinkle, the music teacher. Her voice was like something out of a dream, as was everything else about her. The students were speechless. They thought Mrs. Twinkle was an indescribable wonder. They went out of their way to make a nice impression. Mrs. Twinkle led the students in scales, then she assigned roles for the class musical. Victoria was chosen as the dainty fairy queen. Rita was chosen as the spiffy butterfly princess. Joe was chosen as the all-important pixie messenger, and Chrysanthemum was chosen as a daisy. Chrysanthemum's a daisy, Chrysanthemum's a daisy, Joe, Rita, and Victoria chanted, thinking it was wildly funny. Chrysanthemum wilted. She did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She thought it was absolutely dreadful. What's so humorous? asked Mrs. Twinkle. Chrysanthemum was the answer. Her name is so long, said Joe. It scarcely fits on her name tag, said Rita, pointing. I'm named after my grandmother, said Victoria. She's named after a flower. My name is long, said Mrs. Twinkle. It is, said Joe. My name would scarcely fit on a name tag, said Mrs. Twinkle. It would, said Rita, pointing. And, said Mrs. Twinkle, I'm named after a flower, too. You are, said Victoria. Yes, said Mrs. Twinkle. My name is Delphinium. Delphinium Twinkle. And if my baby is a girl, I'm considering chrysanthemum as a name. I think it's absolutely perfect. Chrysanthemum could scarcely believe her ears. She blushed, she beamed, she bloomed. Chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum. Joe, Rita, and Victoria looked at Chrysanthemum longingly. Call me Marigold, said Joe. I'm Carnation, said Rita, pointing. My name is Lily of the Valley, said Victoria. Chrysanthemum did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She knew it. Overall, the class musical was a huge success. Chrysanthemum was absolutely perfect as a daisy. Victoria made the only mistake. She completely forgot her lines as the dainty fairy queen. Chrysanthemum thought it was wildly funny, and she giggled throughout the entire dance of the flowers. Eventually, Mrs. Twinkle gave birth to a healthy baby girl, and of course, she named her Chrysanthemum. <laughs> the end. That was a good story. Her name is perfect for her. Just like your name is perfect for you. I wonder, can you count how many letters are your, in your name? Chrysanthemum had 13 letters. Chrysanthemum had 13 letters. So I wonder how many letters are in your name. I should count the letters in my name too. M S B O O T E S. I have eight. Miss Boots is eight letters. <laughs> in the tall, tall grass by Denise Fleming. In the 
tall, tall grass. In the tall, tall grass. Crunch, munch, caterpillars, lunch. Dart, dip, honey, hummingbirds, sip. Drum, drum, bees, hum. Crack, snap, wings, flap. Pull, tug, ants, lug. Slip, slide, snakes, glide. Scratch, moles, scratch. Have you ever seen a mole before? I don't know if I have. Skitter, scurry, beetles, hurry. Zip, zap, tongue, snap. What animals are those? Ribbit, ribbit. Hip, hop, ears, flop about this one. It's been years. Hip hop. Rabbits. Stop. Go. Fireflies. Glow. Lunge. Loop. Bats. Swoop. Spread your wings like a bat. See if you can swoop. Stars bright, moon light. Good night, tall, tall grass. See if you can find the moon tonight in the evening once the sun goes down. See if you can find the moon in the night sky. The end. All right, friends, thank you so much for joining me today for these stories. These are really good. Um, and then I'll see you again next time for more stories. So down below, I will have the activities posted and I would love to see what you guys are working on. Um, I hope you're enjoying your time at home. I hope the activities are keeping you busy. I hope you're working hard, helping your parents keep the house clean. Um, if you're having fun with your siblings or your cousins or maybe friends, I miss you and I love you. I hope I will get to see you soon. It's almost the end of the year, so around this time is when we're, we would start saying goodbye to each other. And you guys are going to start getting ready for first grade. I can't believe it. Um, but I will see you next time. I love you and I miss you. See you next time for more Read Alouds. <laughs>